Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're looking at the MiG-29 Fulcrum. A lot of people have a misconception that the MiG-29 was a pushover or a dud. Um, in reality, the MiG-29 was very much a step forward in Russian-Soviet aviation engineering. And so we're going to have a look at that, and uh, then we're going to go ahead and have a couple of dogfights against an F-16 Viper and see how the MiG-29 performs. Alright guys, uh, let's get started with the video. The MiG-29 Fulcrum was the first Russian fourth generation jet fighter, marked by its sleek and deadly appearance in contrast to earlier Soviet fighters. The fast and agile Fulcrum could outrun and outturn almost any NATO aircraft, and it was armed with the most cutting edge missiles of its time. In a sense, the MiG-29 combined fourth generation engineering with third generation hardware and avionics. Its relatively low price meant it initially attracted extensive sales to developing countries, which also led to the Fulcrum not being pushed to its full potential and being shot down many times during various conflicts due to inexperienced and undertrained crews. The MiG-29 began development in 1974, intended to be an advanced lightweight multi-role fighter that would operate from primitive airfields at the front lines of the Cold War, while smaller numbers of heavier Sukhoi-27 flankers would be tasked with handling the longer range missions. It's interesting to note that this method closely paralleled the light and heavy force structures of the F-16 and F-15 that were being developed by the United States Air Force. The first MiG-29s entered active service with the Soviet Air Force in July of 1982 and were given the NATO designation Fulcrums, a name which caught on with some Russian pilots as well. The Fulcrum had a fearsome reputation in the West. After Germany's reunification, a whole squadron of MiG-29 Fulcrum aircraft came into possession of the German Air Force. Western military advisors were quick to analyze its flight characteristics and were astonished by the MiG's performance. The MiG-29's flat fuselage contributes approximately 40% of its lift. The flight and maneuvering capabilities at low speeds and or high angles of attack essential for close combat are unrivaled by the MiG's Western counterparts. The MiG-29 Fulcrum has two RD-33 reheated turbofan engines, which each produce more thrust with afterburner than any single equivalent Western engine. The engines provide a maximum of 2,400 kilometers an hour at altitude and 1,500 kilometers an hour near the ground, and a service ceiling of 18,000 meters or approximately 60,000 feet. The maximum range at altitude is 1,500 kilometers or or 930 miles. The MiG-29's fixed wing profile with large wing leading edge root extensions gives good maneuverability and control at subsonic speeds, including maneuvers at high angles of attack. At these low speeds, the Fulcrum displays good nose authority characteristics similar to that of the Hornet. The maximum operational G-loading of the MiG-29 is 9 Gs. The MiG-29 Fulcrum is considered super maneuverable. It can execute maneuvers impossible with regular aerodynamic controls because of its excellent handling characteristics following a stall. When training against NATO pilots, all of these characteristics of the MiG-29 made it a formidable opponent in the air, especially in close in within visual range dogfights. The MiG-29 performed so well that at times even scored kill ratios as high as 1 to 1 against NATO F-16 Vipers. The MiG-29 was also designed to function while operating from unprepared airstrips, presumably captured by advancing Russian tank divisions in the event of a conflict with NATO forces. The MiG-29 is the world's first aircraft fitted with dual-mode air intakes. During flight, the open air intakes feed air to the engines. While moving on the ground, the air intakes are closed and air is fed through the louvres at the upper surface of the wing roots to prevent ingestion of foreign objects from the runway. This is particularly important when operating from poorly prepared airfields near the front lines that may have just been captured by advancing forces. The MiG-29 would go on to see extensive service in NATO air forces after the end of the Cold War. 
While most have been retired, Poland retains a fleet of 38 MiG-29s. Bulgaria with 19 and Slovakia have 6 operational Fulcrums. The MiG-29s are also being actively used in combat in the Ukraine conflict. There were 80 before hostilities in 2014 broke out, but two have been shot down by Donbass separatist forces with surface-to-air missiles. Syria is believed to have 15 to 20 operational MiG-29 SMs upgraded by Russia with launch rails for the deadly R-77 air-to-air -air missile. The MiG-29 should not be underestimated and deserves a lot of respect in the merge. In the right hands, it is a formidable aircraft with outstanding flight characteristics and a deadly arsenal at its disposal for close in dogfighting. All right, guys, so obviously I'm flying the MiG-29 and we're about to merge with an F-16 off in the distance here. Now I am firing the R-60 missiles and that F-16 is firing the Sidewinder 9M variants. And so his missiles are going to be all aspect. My R-60s are best at rear aspect. And so, you know, there's a little bit of a disadvantage there, but I think I can make it work. And here is the merge right there. And so what I'm going to try to do is pull this F-16 into a nose position fight. Um, I, I, the kind of the rating is pretty equal, so I don't really want to go down that route. Minimum speed. Minimum speed. Minimum speed. I just think I have a much bigger advantage in the nose position fight, keeping it one circle. And he's going to try to shoot me there with no luck. Okay, so uh, that's a bad launch. He was way too close for that. So this F-16, he keeps uh, coming back into the one circle. Looks like he wants to do a nose position fight, which is just generally not... Almost hit him with that one. It's generally just not a great idea in an F-16. It's always going to want a rate fight. This kind of fight is very, very risky for an F-16. Now, if I don't make any critical mistakes, I should be fine, but... Okay, see right here, I've made a critical mistake. <laughs> so let's just hope that I can get under his nose here. Oh, okay, nice. He put those right over top, but those could have been well on target. All right, so I just got to work a little harder. That rudder roll in the MiG-29, very, very useful for these situations. You can see I'm starting to get some angles here, and things may turn around for me. I think I have two R60s left at this point. But if I'm not completely rear aspect, they're pretty useless. Alright, here we go. This is slowly turning in my favor. Okay, so I'm positioned pretty nicely here. I should be able to be glued back here. He's dumping flares, um, expecting a Fox 2 shot, which is very likely here. I'm going give to give him one right now, Fox 2. All right, we'll just go to guns. There we go. All right. So while defending those missiles, he didn't realize he was crossing the nose and uh, splash one.
Alright, so you can see the MiG-29 and the F-16 pretty evenly matched with each one having a little bit of an advantage uh, with a different kind of fight, the MiG-29. Obviously, very big advantage with the one circle nose position fight. Um, never a fight that the F-16 wants to do. So, now, here we are for the merge here. Again, I think this one's going to be pretty even like the last fight. We're going to lead turn them pretty hard here. There he is, okay. Fox 2. And I'm using rudder to try to lead those missiles just because uh, the R60s, as soon as the other guy pulls a bit of uh, Gs, those missiles go stupid. So I'm trying to lead a little bit. Um, R73s, they would have been perfectly capable of hitting them in that situation. Minimum speed. Minimum speed. Alright, let's put some guns on him as he comes across here. Let's give him something to think about. So right here, although the F-16 has, you know, chosen to come into a nose position, one circle fight with the MiG-29, I've accidentally given him all kinds of angles. So he's actually in a really good position here and he comes across, he might actually shoot me. He might be able to get his nose on. Ah, great. Yep, he hit me. Okay, so everything feels good. Uh, this fight might come down to showing off the resiliency of the MiG-29. Um, he definitely hit me a few times there. I'm not sure how many times, but he definitely hit me, but everything feels good. Uh, aircraft is still responding as expected. Um, no hydraulics or fuel leaks. Everything is fine. So uh, got lucky with that one, I think. And now we're going to try to make him pay for that. Right, we can, you can see me using the rudders to try to get those angles. And now we're transitioning into a raid fight on the deck here. And I want to go for 700-ish. Um, sometimes closer to 800 if you're a little bit higher altitude. It feels good in the MiG. And remember that those are in kilometers an hour, not in knots that we're used to in the NATO aircraft. So there's that F-16 in the circle. I'm starting to come around. And uh, he should start getting pretty concerned at this point. Let's give him a Fox 2 since we're rear aspect. Fox 2. Pretty much got him where I want him here, but I am closing a little bit quicker than I would like. We could probably get the kill here. Come on, come on, come on. Good kill. And ejection. Good.
All right, guys, this is the tag view for the second fight that we're gonna review here. Go ahead and fast forward just a little bit. This dashed uh, red line indicates a radar lock. And so you can see here we got our first merge. Now, you know, we say the F-16 is a rate fighter. And so I would say in this situation, if he wanted to really give his F-16 the advantage, he would have done this, right? And we would have forced a two circle would have turned more into something the F-16 would have liked to do. Um, but it's all good. So we do this uh, nose position fight here. We come up and I'm like, all right, you know what? This is a pretty good launch. Um, well, it felt good. To be honest, I'm more used to the R-73 than the R-60. Um, but I thought maybe it could pull it off. And kind of, I mean, not really, but looked good for a second there. Um, enough to scare him into dropping some flares. So... So he goes up there and let's see what's going on here. He's getting pretty slow, true. Like this is a stalled out F-16 up here and uh, I'm not doing too good myself. Uh, this is the part where I will stall out too, but uh, I'm gonna use my rudders to try to roll over and get out of the stall. Um, he's already done that. He's working his way back and uh, I'm just dropping some flares just in case he does have superior Sidewinder M's. So. Here's a couple of rounds. Honestly, I didn't think this would hit him, but I was like, maybe I'll get lucky. Um, worst case scenario, I at least scare the shit out of him a little bit. And, uh, you know, sometimes just scaring a guy will make him do something stupid. So that's kind of what I was going for. Now, this part of the fight, this part is really the reason why I wanted to do this tack view. A lot of people, let's look at this. This is the downward spiral, which I actually lose, which ends up in me getting shot in the head right here right in the top of the aircraft several rounds landed um, absolute miracle that I didn't die here but the reason that I wanted to talk about this fight specifically a lot of people think that in this situation you come out of burner and the reason they think that is because well if you come out of burner I mean it makes logical sense right if you come out of burner you become slower this guy's faster he'll end up underneath you and then you can kill him right okay I mean it makes logical sense but actually what's going on here is something very different. So first of all, you want to be in burner all the time. And that's just to max perform your aircraft. If you're not in burner, you're not max performing your aircraft. And the only time to really come out of burner is if you had a, you know, a missile fired at you, a heat seeker of some kind, you're coming out of burner for a second, dropping some flares. And also to manage closure if you're about to get a kill. And again, that's, that's a one second, two second at a burner thing. It's not like you just come out of burner and just hang out you know so what's going on here it's a it's a lift vector thing so I'm actually gonna turn on lift vectors this little red line coming out of the top of my head this is gonna be the lift vector and this red line here is the one in front is obviously the nose position and so what you're trying to do is keep your lift vector on the bandits high six this is what you're trying to do in this situation it is not to come out of burner and whoever can pull their, uh, put their their lift vector on the other band as high six better is the one who's gonna win this thing. So we'll pick him as well so we can see his lift vector. We'll turn off the labels. All right, so you can see mine positioned, you know, kind of good. His is a little better here. And so his is pointing right at me, mine is pointed right at him here, so we're pretty neutral. We can see here my lift vector above him on his high six. Um, his is much higher on my six, so he's doing a better job here. And that's exactly why he wins this. You see this? So let's go back a little bit more. So he's doing a better job of keeping his lift vector above me on my high six you see right here look at the difference in that so I have put it right here he's put it way up here okay so he's putting his lift vector up there and he's pulling to the high six okay and that is what's gonna give him this advantage he's in burner this entire time he didn't come out of burner you know and look at that and he pulls up and he ends up on top of me 
So that's a, that's a very important thing. A lot of people will come out of burner there and what will happen is um, you're going to die because you're going to get low on speed, especially in this, uh, you know, scissor fight on the way down. So uh, now he's got himself an advantage. It's just a matter of putting his nose on me, which he does. And uh, I don't remember how many hits, but it was several hits right there. And um, surprisingly, the MiG can take a pretty good punishment. So, you know, we're good there. And so we're back into the one circle nose position fight against this F-16, which again is not how the F-16 likes to fight, but he is doing a good job of holding his own. The F-16 MiG-29 are actually pretty matched. I mean, they, they both have some advantages, but they're, they're pretty equal across the board for a lot of things. Uh, very similar characteristics. And so here we go. We are on the deck transitioned into a rate fight on the deck here and so let's see here I'm getting he's getting 16 I'm getting 14 13 12 so he's actually getting a little more than me um, but he's really slow so what's gonna happen is I'm gonna start coming around because I think I'm getting yeah so now I'm getting 18 he's getting 15 because he pulled a little too hard on the stick here now I'm getting 21, he's getting 14. So this is how you know, you're gonna start coming around the circle. I'm getting 22, he's getting 11, right? And it was just coming around 22, 13, like this is just, and then right here, I'm like, you know what? This is, to me, I, in the fight, this seemed like a rear aspect shot, but you know, from the aspect that I'm seeing now, it's, it's obviously not. Um, but I'm still impressed that that R60 still tried. He tried. And uh, it freaked him out enough to make him, you know, let's get rid of this. It freaked him out enough to make him, at this point, like, I'm just on his tail. So I don't think we need the, the labels anymore. And um, it freaks him out enough to make him, you know, do this little little roll and jink. And then he tries to do a tuck under uh, jink here to try to save his life, which almost worked. Um... I figured, like, I was out raiding the crap out of him, so I was like, even if I fail here, I might be able to still turn this fight around and go for another loop. So I was like, you know what, we'll just push in while he's slow and try to kill him. Use the rudder, the uh, low speed nose authority of the MiG allows that kind of shot, and he kind of crosses in front of the nose. And uh, that's what kills the F-16. All right, guys, so that's going to be the video for today. Big thank you to everybody for watching. Uh, big thank you to The Last Taco for helping out with this video. Um, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.